Good evening. You're watching the Digital Age, and I'm James Goodale. Recently, the head of the Los Angeles Times, the president, in fact, got fired by the parent company, the Chicago Tribune Company, a public company. For what? For not cutting his editorial budget enough to meet the demands of the Chicago Tribune. The question I want to ask tonight is, should public companies own the press, or should the press be private? And tonight, I have the great pleasure of talking to Mort Zuckerman, who is the uh, owner, publisher, and editor of the U.S. News and World Report, and the publisher of the New York Daily News. And I'd like to note, Mort, both of those companies are, are, are private. Mort, I did a little research on, on the Daily News, and I have to say I was a little surprised. I'm going to really soft soapy with these numbers. Circulation, so I figure this is last year, is more or less about 708,000. That's pretty much what it was five years ago. So you, it, there was a drop year to year, but you know, it's, it's roughly, roughly steady. Here's a number that really boggles my imagination. Uh, the New York Daily News has a reading audience of 2.2 million daily against the New York Times 1.6 million. 2.8 million against the New York Times 2.2 on Sunday. Right. I mean, those numbers are uh, unbelievable. Then uh, I also read that, and I had read this before, that you're making money at the Daily News. You have right. 340 million and said 15 million profit. Uh, your ad revenues are, are, are greater than, than the Post. And then the piece de resistance, if I may say so, is the Columbia Journalism Review. Yet close students of New York newspapering think that these days the news has the best metropolitan coverage in the city, including that of the New York Times. I mean, that's a stunning. Uh, that was last year. How, what's going on this year? Well, we're, our circulation uh, is still holding firm, and uh, in particular on Sunday, which is the most important paper of the week, uh, we're uh, pretty much flat, and uh, we're almost twice as uh, large on Sunday as the New York Post. Um, and as you point out, uh, the metropolitan audience for the Daily News is really quite extraordinary, and this is a reach that uh, uh, not too many other newspapers have in their metropolitan market. And the reason why the Daily News has uh, flourished is because it provides an audience for advertisers, frankly, that is very distinct from the New York Times, and it's the middle and working class audience of the city of New York, and is a first read for the bulk of our newspaper readers and therefore it works for the advertising you know advertising in a daily newspaper is something that they test you know you put in a one-day sale for whatever macy's and they'll be able to tell you what the results are and that's it works for the daily news and that's why we continue to do well and we've tried to maintain uh the daily news as a really good local paper and if i do nothing else other than have endorsed uh, Rudy Giuliani uh, when he first ran with a, a, an endorsement that was greater than his, that the political value of the endorsement was greater than his margin of victory. And we were the only newspaper in the city to endorse Mike Bloomberg for his first term. And he won by a half of 1%. And an endorsement for the Daily News is probably worth 2 to 3%. So those are two major contributions that uh, I feel we made to the welfare of the city. Let's talk about the audience. Uh it's the largest minority audience, I believe. Uh, yeah. I would assume the that largest I'm immigrant audience, the largest minority audience, and the largest audience, the largest the working largest class large audience. audience. And I didn't say it's the fourth largest audience of any newspaper in the United States. That's I mean, right. People who are watching the show will think I'm making this up because most people think of the Post as the tabloid of choice. We'll get that to them in a minute. There was an interesting story in the, in the New York Times not so long ago that said that the black middle class in Queens was making more money than the whites. Um, is this research, that, is this black power part of the power of your newspaper? Sure, but it's not only the uh, African-American community, which has begun to do much better in the city of New York, not only in terms of their employment, but in terms of the value of their homes, both in Queens and in uh, Harlem and the Bronx, but also the Hispanic community has gradually uh, improved itself, and the Asian community has gradually improved itself. And all of these communities are making up a larger and larger portion of New York City, and their natural newspaper is uh, the Daily News. In addition to that, we have a very large union audience, and uh, it's a working class and middle class, lower middle class, middle class audience. 
and it is a paper also that people read on the subway. So we have a, a much more stable audience, uh, by and large, than uh, other newspapers. And uh, we have maintained our competitive edge, for example, to the New York Post, which you talked about, even though we're twice as expensive as they are. We're at 50 cents, and they're at 25 cents. Uh, so this does demonstrate, I think, the uh, real audience and audience loyalty of the Daily News, and it's the reason why it has continued to do well um, in the last uh, half dozen years when the newspaper world has been buffeted uh, dramatically by two things. Uh, one, and in particular that has affected everybody, is a dramatic increase in newsprint prices. I mean, it's gone from $450 a ton to roughly $700 a ton. It's $250 a ton of additional money. We use 100,000 tons a year, so that affects us. The, the LA Times uses probably 400,000 tons a year, and they are just facing a huge hit on that. And at the same time, advertising has dropped, particularly, I might add, in the entertainment area for the LA Times and the New York Times. But that doesn't, that doesn't affect No, it affects us. We have, we have by far and away the best numbers of people who go to the movies, who go to the movies on opening yeah. weekend, who take their children to the movies, who go to the movie a second time, etc. So it has also affected us, even though we have such terrific numbers for people who go to the movies. Uh, so this is, uh, there, are, there are just fundamental trends affecting the newspaper business, which make it more difficult, and therefore, why, whether you do it because you have to or whether you do it because you see what's coming down the road, everybody is, is, is trying to compress their costs. Okay, let me, let, I want to get to that a, a bit a, a more in just a second, but I do want to talk about the Post. Yeah. Because uh, for Manhattanites, and you and I are Manhattanites, the New York Post is the tab of, of, of choice. It's a second buy for many of us. We don't buy it all the time. Uh, it's uh, glossy, it's this and that. And as I said at the opening of the show, because of that, when we look at the news numbers, I have, have surprise. But the Post uh, is a challenge to you, obviously, because as you say, they sell for 25 cents. Uh, secondly, they're a challenge to you while your circulation numbers have remained stable. During that same period of time about which I've talked, the New York Post has gone up by about 50, 60 percent, like 400 to 700, getting close to you, 400 to 600,000, something like that. Um, but you're leaving out the Sunday paper, which is the right. most important paper for any newspaper yeah, that's in the, the business. You've got them on Sunday. We, oh, and then you make uh, more money on Sunday. Yeah, well, have, oh, uh, by far. Now, we're, we're close to 800,000 on Sunday. They're at 430,000 on Sunday. Right. Uh, so everybody leaves that out, but that is the most important paper. The, the issue isn't just Monday through Friday. The big issue for us is Sunday. And uh, frankly, they, their Sunday circulation has declined, and ours has held up there. So that is where we get the biggest part of our advertising every week. And you know it with the Sunday New York Times, and it's true with the, the Daily News. So people seem to forget about that. Also, we're not just a Manhattan paper. I mean, we're the number one paper in Brooklyn. We're the number one paper right. in Queens. We're right. the number one paper in the right. Bronx. There are other boroughs in this city other than mm -hmm. those people who live between 96th Street and... and okay, but let me ask you psychologically, uh, 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 granting you all those arguments, um, if the trend continues, uh, the Post will pass the news. No, they won't. Well, if the trends continue. Like you know, they, you wait... Daily, you, you but wait, if they do, you if they wait, do... You wait and see. You wait and see. You don't think they're you ever going to pass see. you? Uh, no, I do not. How much money do you think Murdoch's losing on this? Seventy million dollars a year, according to the New York Times, and uh, from my other sources of information, it's right in that range. And he is pre obviously prepared to do that for whatever political influence it gives him. Let's uh, let's turn over to the, the larger issue that we were talking about. I mean, let's go back to the the Los Angeles Times. Los Angeles Times, one of the great newspapers in, in America. Uh, a business person goes to the chopping block and says. You know, if you want me to do what you want me to do, is to cut back the news coverage, you know, chop my head off. And indeed, the they did. Chicago Tribune uh, did. Now, I wonder, would the Los Angeles Times be better off as a private company? Yes, I do think it would be better off as a private company or privately owned because you would have people who are much less concerned with what public companies have to be concerned about, which is the value of the stock price and therefore the earnings and the possibility of growth in earnings, which affects the multiple of those earnings, which affects the stock price. Uh, it is not unreasonable for people to be in business to make money, uh, you know, uh, whereas private individuals can own it and not care about what the financial 
uh, rewards are. I owned uh, the Atlantic Monthly for 20 years. I lost an average of $3 million a year for each of the 20 years. I tried everything you could to try and get it to break even. I failed on everything, and I thought, <coughs> well, then it was taken over by another wonderful man with a great sense of public spirit. Um, and um, uh, I read an interview in, in, in which he said, God, I, I thought I could really improve the paper, and now I'm losing $12 million a year. <laughs> I mean, these are very difficult things to, to, to work. But if you are, as a private individual, willing to uh, try and make, have it make money, but willing not to make as much money, or willing even to lose money, it's a different thing. But for a public company, you have a different obligation. You have a lot of obligations to shareholders. And if you are, as this guy was, the publisher of the LA Times, it's one thing to go and say, I don't want to do this. It's another thing to publicly take on, as he did with the editor, and make a public statement and get people to sign in support of it and have a public battle between the publisher of the LA Times and the owner of the LA Times. It, it is an unsustainable position. Um, in the end, the, he doesn't have the power to do that, and they, in a sense, almost don't have the power not to take action against it because they can't lose control of the company when there is a, I don't know how many public shareholders, and thousands of yeah, tens of thousands of public shareholders. They have their obligations. There are also uh, public, public newspapers, public media companies, make a lot of money, yeah. even though they face these huge challenges about which we're going to talk in a yeah. moment, the internet. Uh, by, by ordinary standards, they make a lot of money. So for $100 they take in, they keep 20 uh, on average. Now, that's a lot compared yeah. to, now, if we just take the Daily News, yeah. you're 340, you're taking in 15, do the math, it's, right. it's, it's much less. Right. And you, with that kind of, um, uh, what's known as profit margins, you probably would have a difficulty uh, being a public company because I want to say, I don't want to be a public get the company. Get the yes. margin up, do this, do, this, do that, want. so that the, the, so these companies, if they were taken uh, private, there's plenty of money, plenty of money to be made. Uh, as a, as a private entity. Let me ask you, uh, I know you probably don't want to talk about your, your competitors, uh, and I suppose if, if the New York Times were to go were to go private, uh, that might not be in your self-interest because perhaps they can compete with you more, though. I don't seem to compete that much, to tell the truth. And, it's and it's yeah. possible. Look, I think the New York Times, to be more competitive, uh, would, on one level or another, either by spending more money on editorial or by making less profit, uh, could do that. But they're not pub private, they're public, and until they go private, they can't do that. In fact, because the New York Post doesn't disclose the individual performance of uh, 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 its uh, uh, economics, and uh, Rupert Murdoch can do with it as he will, uh, but not too many companies are in that kind of a position. So you have that kind of pressure. The, like it or not, we have an economic system. Once you get to be a public company, that rationalizes what the company does in economic terms more than in journalistic values. As a private individual, you can do it very differently. Do you think the Times should go private? Uh, I think the Times would like to go private if I were the Times. I don't think it's possible to go private. You still have to, you would have to raise a tremendous amount of money. And as a company, they may be able to go private if they're willing to sell off a lot of their assets. The Wall Street Journal reported uh, a couple of weeks ago that it might be a good idea for the Times to sell them didn't report it, it was an opinion piece, to sell the Boston Globe. Well, what do you think of that? I you mean, know, you, you're I, an old Boston. Yeah, no, you're no, an old no, Boston I, and I, Are you I, still Boston? What's your name of your company? Boston Property. Boston Property. I, Property. Have, a, I have a public company, <laughs> and I can tell you that I know exactly what the pressures are yeah. uh, uh, to when you're a public company and you have to answer to an analysts and you have to answer to the public. You cannot ignore it. Uh, you know, my, our colleagues own 20% of the company, but the public owns 80% of the public company. We cannot fail to respond to that. Now, we try and do the work at the qualitative level that we have continued to work on, but I, I understand those pressures. Now, would, would the Boston Globe uh, be a better company as a, a better a product as yeah. a private company? Very possibly. I haven't really followed it that closely. But I would say to you, if it went as a private company compared to the price, which the New York Times paid for it, and then if they had to sell it publicly, there would be, I suspect, a substantial loss because the Boston Globe's economics are even worse than the New York Times' economics. Now, let's let's uh, discuss why the Boston, Boston Globe and other newspapers' economics are so bad. Right. And uh, the quick answer is the net. It is the digital age and the net. Uh, how is the industry responding to this? How are you responding well, to Well, that, again, there are two sides to it, and I think it's very important that people remember that 
newsprint, the cost side is just as important as the revenue side. Newsprint has gone up dramatically. That's put one set of pressures on the newspaper. But what you've also had is a disintermediation, that is people leaving both as readers and as advertisers, newspapers and going to the internet. That is why newspapers have started an internet and continue to refurbish that internet site every day and are selling advertising. And we're doing that at the Daily News now, we're doing it at US News, and that is where advertising is going up dramatically. Pardon me, advertising is not going up dramatically. If anything, at best, it's holding flat. And in, in many cases, it's, it's going down a little bit. So you have a real problem. But the major pressure on the economics of newspapers has not been, in my judgment, on the revenue side. While there have been drops, it's been you know, five, seven, eight percent. But you've had a huge increase in cost, primarily newsprint costs. That's what people oh, do not pay attention to. All right, so. Uh, and it comes right off the bottom line. If we're paying $25 million, there's no doubt but that our profitability is affected by that. We cannot pass that on in the usual way, either through increased circulation price or through increased advertising rates. A little bit of it we can, but not nearly enough. So our profitability is down probably by, uh, I don't know, 40, 50 percent in the last five or six years as a result primarily of that. We're still profitable um, and, and still significantly profitable. Okay, so now you're sitting in the same seat as everybody else, although you're private and you have more flexibility. Right. But in a sense, you're no different than the Chicago Tribune, which looks at the LA Times. You're no different than the New York Times, right. which looks at itself and, and deals with, with the future. Tell me exactly how it plays out in your mind. I mean, you say, okay, we're selling advertising on the net. Yeah. Uh, the costs are going up. Uh, is there going to be enough revenue out there to, to meet the cost that you get from the net? Is well, that, that, is, that is what everybody's expectation is, and that is what we're all working towards. In the meantime, you may be slightly less profitable, but you're at a moment where you're at, your internet advertising is going this way. It's starting from a fairly low base. Your other advertising is coming down. You have to hope that your internet profitability um, goes up enough to compensate for the other. I think it will, but there is a gap in between where it's still not you there. Do, do think I think it'll take three to three years to be able to, to cover your absolutely. Uh, that will mean more people will be going to the net too because they're the going they're, they're going, going there to the anyway. net anyhow they, you're just following the market right. now it does mean we're not basically losing our audience um, now some newspapers are losing their audience because of the nature of their audience because we have an audience um, uh, 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 as, as I pointed out an immigrant audience and uh, a, a working class on it and the people who travel by the subway they still read the daily news thank God but I'm not saying it's easy well, let me ask you, are minorities this is an elitist question, excuse me for saying so, but are min minorities uh, computer literate so that they can go on the net? Sure. They, they are all becoming computer literate. And uh, this is not, uh, the, the first thing they do is to try and learn the language. I'm, I'm not talking about, I'm talking about immigrants. Yeah. And that, for that, they use uh, newspapers a lot. Right. That's a very good thing for them to do, particularly for their children. We have big programs to help um, it's called Newspapers and Education to help the public school students of New York City sort of immerse themselves in language. They take the newspapers home, their pa parents read the newspapers, and so it really works. Uh, but yes, they're all going to go in that direction. doesn't mean they're not going to read a newspaper. There is still a value and a psychological reward and an information reward to read the newspaper. It comes to you at a particular time of day. You don't have to sit there in front of a screen. Some people are perfectly happy just to sit in front of a screen, but a lot of people still like reading a newspaper. There's a, a kind of quality to it that so, people like. So let's see if I follow this. That you think people continue to read the newspaper in the same number as, say, at 700,000? I think we'll maintain our... Uh, circulation uh, levels, give or take a few thousand. I think, uh, frankly, we're going to do better than people expect for a while. I don't know. I can't predict how per pervasive the use of the in internet will be. Uh, I mean, there's no doubt it's going to be uh, increasing. And But we're also shifting a great deal of our journalistic activity to the internet site. And what you can do on the internet site, for example, is to get a lot of material. You, you're democratizing the collection of news. Um, people of, are all, of all sorts are sort of submitting pieces for the daily news, and we're going to edit them. 
for our internet site, so it'll, 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 there'll be a core from the newspaper and a core from other people, so it'll have its own attraction. And we don't expect that that's going to diminish. We think it's going to go through the roof over time. It's going to take us a little time to get the habits both uh, 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 in, our, in our editorial room and amongst the readers to, to do that, but it's happening. You may have a, a peculiar uh, uh, situation, or particular is a better way of saying it, uh, as compared with, let's just say, the Boston Globe. Yeah. Now, you're from, you're from Boston, the right. audience isn't from Boston, but uh, Boston is full of highly educated, highly educated people. Yeah. There is some belief that those people are so net savvy that they want to spend more time on the net than they do with the Boston Globe, and therefore the Boston Globe circulation is taking a huge, yeah. taking a huge drop. Then a lot of people say, well, that's going to be true for every city paper, except the Times and the Wall Street Journal, which aren't city papers; they're, nas they're national papers. But here, we got the Daily News. You may be able to I'm going to soft right. soap you again. No, but you may be able to have it uh, both ways because, <laughs> well, look, you know, you have a. Uh, audience that is becoming educated in speaking, right. so forth and so on, will hang with the paper longer than a highly educated uh, group would in, in, in Well, it's, it's not even a question of education. It's also a question of the fact that there's a large immigrant part. We had New York City added a million people, roughly slightly right. under a million people in the decade right. of the 1990s. Right. We expect to add another million and a half to two million people in the next two decades. These are people who are instinctively going to gravitate to a newspaper because a lot of them are going to be foreign language people, a huge increase in the Asian population, huge increase in the Hispanic population, which is not just um, people from Mexico, it's all over the Hispanic world. Um, so you have an audience that naturally gravitates to a newspaper. I mean, I think that as they go through the educational process, they will become computer literate as well. So you will have that mix, but we will have a different kind of an audience that we will be able to retain which I think will work very, very well for the Daily News. I'm not saying it's going to be what it was, you know, 50 well, years ago when you had no television. Two million. Yeah, we two had million two million time. daily circulation. But the Daily News was thought to be dead until you picked it up. Well, it was. It was. It was, it was I would have to he say it was on lost, his last few. He must few, have lost a fair amount of money on it, at least according to your testimony. So yes. Union yes, we yeah. did uh, for a while. And, the, uh, I, I, and I also have to tell you, I made mistakes. I was a new publisher in the newspaper business, and it was a very different business, so I had to pay for my own mistakes. Um, and the biggest one of which I will tell you was I reduced the Sunday circulation uh, from a dollar fifty to a dollar because um, Murdoch came in with 25 cents on Sunday. It turned out people really preferred the daily news on Sunday, and we were ver virtually not affected by that, and, uh, and they finally gave up the ghost on that, and they're still at only about half our circulation on Sunday, which is, was still our major paper. And that one move was the, the most expensive move, and uh, I, I really wished I hadn't done that. It's much more difficult to go back up again. Well, one thing about the, as long as you brought up the post again, I don't want to keep bringing up the post, in your face, but I would have thought it fair to say that the color and the production of the post yep. is better than the news. And if I, were, if I were sitting at the news, I would say, you know, at some time we're going to have to deal with the issue of presses and color, or don't you feel that way? No, no, you're absolutely right. We do not have enough color positions in the daily news. We did start it. We did build a new plant in the 1990s, and unfortunately, this was one of the mistakes which I made. I didn't know enough about it. Um, a colleague of mine handled it. I have absolutely no mechanical or technical skills, and in retrospect, we did not put in enough color positions. Well, we're in the process of putting in more, and uh, we're also going to uh, do other things to improve the quality of our printing. And. You are absolutely right about that. It takes time, and it's an expensive and more difficult proposition, in a sense, to fix up an existing facility. So um, you're, you're absolutely right about that, and that does make a difference. That's, uh, I guess the bottom line on newspapers, you certainly think the news is going to make it. It's fair to say, it looks to me as though you think if newspapers can hang in and go private, they can make it. Can we talk about U.S. News and World Report a little bit? Yeah. Because last week, we had uh, Ed Kozeron, who used to be the editor of the Daily News, and he said that of the three news magazines, that would be Time, Newsweek, U.S. News and World Report, uh, he said he didn't think U.S. News and World Report would make it. He also said, parenthetically, that he tried to get you to convert U.S. News to something that would be more like The Economist. For those who don't read The Economist, people who, it's not about economics, it's a great news magazine. But, uh, Tell me about uh, uh, 
the U.S. News will report. I will say that I look at the numbers there. The circulation is up from, let's say, five years ago. Time is down quite a bit. Newsweek is, is floating in, 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 in the middle. Uh, well, you what, a, what do you think you, about you, you uh, whether you guys are going to make it or not? You get a lot of opinions uh, on these very subjects without people looking at what the facts are, which, thank God, you have done. Um, look, I'll tell you something. U.S. News has a better chance to succeed in an Internet world than any other news magazine, if I may say that. And I'll tell you why. You may know that our strongest issues, our franchise issues, are the best colleges, the best graduate schools, the best hospitals, the best HMOs. We have become... Uh, recognized uh, sort of as a good housekeeping seal of approval for best whatever. So much so that um, a, a, another company, not, 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 our, not at our initiative, did a survey and they asked in this, would, uh, if the U.S. News described this particular product as the best, would it affect your purchasing decision? And a huge number, over 70% said yes. So they came to us, and we have now started, in effect, an Internet company, which is a spin-off of U.S. News, which is called U.S. News and World Report Rankings and Reviews .com. We, we're just starting the company, and we are going to have a business which is going to focus just on the kinds of appraisals of various kinds of products that we don't do in the magazine, as well as the ones that we do in a magazine. So in one sense, there is a great transfer of the brand and the reputation of U.S. News, which, by the way, was ranked as the most credible um, uh, print uh, uh, media by the Pew Research Center. Um, uh, two years ago, and this year we're only beaten out by the Wall Street Journal just slightly. So it has a great deal of credibility in terms of what it does. And this translates to another business that we have started, which is called Best Health. Uh, this is based on, uh, uh, alas, a personal experience. And when you, when you have somebody in your family who's sick, the, the hospital often gives you a medical folio. In this case, it was 56 pages. I didn't understand the damn thing. I've read it a half a dozen times. We are working now with the Stanford Hospital and Medical School, the Johns Hopkins Hospital and Medical School, the Cleveland Clinic, the Mayo Clinic, the Joslin Clinic, the, the Harvard Medical School. We're translating their medical conditions into language that people are understanding, and that's going to be another website okay, called we, Best Health. Excuse me. We've got uh, one minute left. Oh. I want to give you the first question. Yes or no? Are you making money in U.S. News and World Report? We are. No, we're not making money at U.S. News and World Report, but we're doing we're doing extremely well if you include our website businesses. We're and making that, more money off our website business than we do on. And I want to ask you the, the question of the day: is, Should the should the <coughs> should the public own the press? Well, you know, the public has to own the press these days simply because of the capital that's involved. It's the only way to collect enough capital, but. Is there an advantage to having the private ownership? I absolutely think there is. Because I think private owners, I'll use myself as an example, or David Bradley who bought the Atlantic from me, we're not in there to maximize our profitability. We have different values that we bring to it. I don't need to maximize the profitability. I'm not interested in maximizing. I am interested in maximizing the journalism of it. I'm not saying I do that perfectly either. And I am concerned about the costs and the profitability. It's just a question of the rel relationship between them. Thanks a lot for coming by, Ward. Thank you. And thank you for coming by to watch the Digital Age. And please come back next week and learn more about the Digital Age. I am James Goodale. Good night. <laughs>